Hi folks, let's talk about differential equations. So I'll start with the definition of a differential equation. A differential equation, or DE as we'll refer to it, is an equation, and it's an equation involving some unknown function and some of the derivatives of the unknown function. Typically, when we're studying differential equations, we'll be looking to get information about the unknown function. Just like when we solve an algebraic equation, we have some unknown quantity, and we want to find or get information about that unknown quantity. So uh, we don't have any tools to understand differential equations yet, so let's start off by doing some guessing and checking. And we'll try to find those unknown functions or solutions to the differential equations by guessing and checking. Let's start with a fairly simple differential equation that, believe it or not, you have already seen and studied in calculus. Calculus 1. Uh, that equation is dy dt equals t. So there's some unknown function y of t, and we know that its derivative, dy dt, is equal to t. Let's make some guesses as to what we think y of t could be, and let's check those guesses. All right, first guess. Let's guess that y of t equals t. All right, if you already know how to solve this equation, you might think that's a silly guess, but let's check it anyway, just so we can see the mechanics of checking it. So to check it, what we need to do is we need to figure out whether or not dy dt equals t. Well, let's compute dy dt. dy dt is equal to the derivative of t, which is equal to 1. OK, is 1 equal to t? Is dy dt equal to t? No. So y of t equals t is not a solution to this differential equation. Let's make another guess. How about y of t equals t squared? Now, if you know where this is going, you'll know that this is pretty close. Let's check to see if dy dt equals t. Well, dy dt is equal to the derivative with respect to t of t squared, which is equal to 2t. Is 2t equal to t? No, it's not. Not unless t equals 0, I guess. But we're looking for all values of t. So no, it's not, but it's close. So we can adjust this a little bit. Let's adjust our guess to y of t equals 1 half t squared. Now the 1 half and the 2 will cancel. So we find that dy dt, which is equal to the derivative of 1 half t squared, is equal to t. So t equals t, and that's true for all values of t. And so we have found a solution to the differential equation. We found a function y of t for which dy dt equals t squared. Sorry, equals t. OK, great. We've solved this differential equation. We've found a solution, y of t, for which dy dt equals t. OK, we're proud of ourselves. We found this solution, y of t equals 1 half t squared, to the differential equation dy dt equals t. Great. So are there more? We know that there can be more than one solution to an algebraic equation. For example, a quadratic equation has two solutions. So can differential equations have more than one solution? Well, uh, this question actually isn't too hard to answer for this particular example because this is an example that we've already seen in Calculus 1. This is an example where we're looking for a function whose derivative is given, and we just need to integrate that derivative to find the original function. So we can integrate dy dt equals t, integrate with respect to t to get 1 half t squared plus c, right? You remember that plus c from integration? So the plus c allows us to find more solutions. So in fact, y of t equals 1 half t squared plus c is a solution for any choice of c to this differential equation. Now let's check that using the same kind of methodology that we were checking before. Let's check for y of t equals 1 half t squared plus c. Let's see that dy dt is equal to t. In other words, it satisfies the differential equation. We'll differentiate dy dt equals the derivative of 1 half t squared plus c. The derivative distributes across the addition, so we get the derivative of 1 half t squared, which is t, plus the derivative of just c. And c is a constant, so its derivative is 0. So that leaves us just with t. We have dy dt equals t, which says that the function y of t equals 1 half t squared plus c satisfies the differential equation for any value of c. Now, this is kind of a cool observation. This is one that holds in general for all kinds of differential equations. Solutions to differential equations will come in families. So in other words, you'll get 
when you are trying to solve a differential equation, you get, in, generally speaking, an infinite number of solutions. We're going to call it a family, an infinite family of solutions, typically parametrized by some constant, or maybe more than one constant, but typically parametrized by some constant. And so we can see here the, the family of, of solutions is given by 1 half t squared plus c. For different choices of c, you get different members of that family. Now, there's a kind of funny piece of terminology that we use. We call that family a general solution. So it sounds like a singular, like just one solution, but we'll call a family of solutions a general solution. And then soon, in just a little bit, we'll be talking about pinning down one member of that family to get a particular solution to the differential equation. Let's solve another differential equation by guessing and checking. This is a great differential equation, probably one of the most important differential equations that there is. It's dy dt equals y. Now, this one's a little different because I can't solve it directly by just integrating. I can't just integrate both sides. Um, I need a function y of t for which the derivative dy dt is equal to y. So a function who is its own derivative, okay? Um, for our first guess, I'd like to make I guess it's not just incorrect, but kind of nonsensical, okay? And the reason I want to do that is because it's a great way to see an easy mistake that a lot of people make when they're first thinking about differential equations, which is to try to integrate both sides and to treat this y as an independent variable. So let's imagine that we integrate both sides, just like we did in the last one, and we get something like, well, y of t is now 1 half y squared, or 1 half y squared plus c. Let's just say it's 1 half y squared. So this is my guess, y of t equals 1 half y squared. So not only can I not check this guess, this guess doesn't even make any sense. And the reason is 1 half y squared is not a function of, of t at all. I want y of t equals some function of t. And saying y of t equals 1 half y squared, well, that would be a nice way to sort of specify some value y, but that's not going to give me a function y of t. So this guess doesn't even make any sense. Okay. But it's also a, a mistake that, that a lot of folks are guaranteed to make to treat y as an independent variable and to try to integrate or to try to manipulate it as such. So just as kind of a cautionary tale here. Let's make a, a, an incorrect guess, but one that actually is, makes sense so that we can check it and see if it's correct. Let's guess y of t equals t. Well, if I differentiate dy dt, I get 1 and is and of course, y is equal to t by the original guess. And so is 1 equal to t? No, it's not. OK, so y of t equals t is not a solution to this differential equation. Now, this is a good time to sort of pause and think about what the differential equation is really saying and to think of whether or not you know a function which satisfies that property that the differential equation is stating. It's stating that the function y of t is its own derivative. And I'll bet if you pause and you think for a minute, you'll be able to think of a function who is its own derivative. That function is y of t equals e to the t. So we can check that, okay? dy dt equals e to the t. The function is its own derivative. e to the t is its own derivative. And y of t equals e to the t. So since e to the t equals e to the t, we have found a solution to this wonderful differential equation dy dt equals y. And this is great. This is really the, this is the first step into actually solving more complicated differential equations that can't be solved just by a direct integration like you were able to do in Calc 1. We found our solution, y of t equals e to the t. Now I'm gonna come back with that annoying question again. Are there more solutions? In fact, what is the general solution? What is the family of solutions, the infinite family of solutions to this differential equation? Well, we might guess e to the t plus c. Why not? That's a great guess. <clears throat> Let's check it. So y of t equals e to the t plus c. Let's see if, for general values of c, this function satisfies the differential equation. So the derivative of y of t equals e to the t plus c, that's just e to the t, and y of t is e to the t plus c. So question, is e to the t equal to e to the t plus c? Well, no, not generally, not unless c equals zero, and when c equals zero, that's the solution, e to the t, which we already found. So that is not the general family. It's not like the previous example where we just add plus c, like when we're integrating something. So 
the family is going to have a different form. In this case, the family has the form y of t equals c times e to the t. So it's a multiple in front, and that gives us different solutions to the same differential equation. Let's check and make sure that that actually works. So dy dt, well, that's just c e to the t again. That constant comes out of the derivative as it doesn't affect the value of the derivative. Meanwhile, y, of course, is c e to the t. And so dy dt equals y here. And so this guess works for all possible values of c. And it's worth noting, it also works for c equals 0. So that just gives us 0 equals 0. So in particular, we get 0 as a solution to this differential equation. Very cool. All right, I'd like to talk about one more topic. That topic is initial value problems. So we've been solving differential equations by guessing and checking, and we've been not only finding one or particular solution, we've been finding general solutions, big families of solutions parametrized by some constant. Now, an initial value problem is, an, is a differential equation plus an extra piece of information, and that extra piece of information allows us to pin down one particular solution out of the general solution, out of the general family of solutions to the differential equation. So what is an initial value problem? An initial value problem, or an IVP, is a differential equation together with an extra piece of information. And that extra piece of information is an initial value for the unknown function. And we should think of the initial value as the thing that pins down a particular solution from that general solution or from the family of solutions to the differential equation. So let's look at an example. Let's go back to our favorite differential equation, dy dt equals y. And let's add in an extra piece of information. Let's say not only do we want y of t to satisfy dy dt equals y, we would like it also to satisfy y of 0 equals 1. There's the initial value. Okay, We think of an initial because, well, it's like a starting value or something. It's where I'm going to start running the differential equation. Well, we found the general solution already. The general solution is y of t equals c e to the t. But the initial value gives us an extra piece of information that y of 0 is equal to 1. So let's plug that in and let's see what that says about c. y of 0, well that's y of 0 is c times e to the 0, which is supposed to be equal to 1. And so that says, since c times e to the 0 is equal to c, that says that c must be 1. And so the solution to this initial value problem is y of t equals e to the t. It's one particular solution out of that family. Great. Let's look at one more example of an initial value problem. This one is, looks a little uglier, but let's do it just to kind of see that uh, the, just the general strategy here. So dy dt equals y, and this time I'm going to say y of 1 equals 2. Great. Let's plug in 1 for t, and we get y of 1 equals c times e to the 1. Now, c times e to the 1, that's supposed to be equal to 2. And so we get c times e equals 2. We can solve for c, and we get c equals 2 over e. That's not pretty, but it's the value of c that we have found from that initial value. So the solution to this initial value problem is, using that value for c, y of t equals 2 over e times e to the t. All right. See you next time.